see if I can get you in close here. Nice transplant, corn transplant. Beautiful. Perfect for putting right in the ground. I wouldn't want them to get too much farther in their development like that, but you can, I'm sure you can probably get by. Hello everybody and welcome back. This is not a pro gardener here. We are in zone 6B. It's about 45 degrees outside this morning with a slight breeze blowing. What we're going to be doing today is we're in the in-ground garden at the garage, the garage plot. We're going to be transplanting corn. What? Yeah, you can do that. It's, you'll see, we'll show you. We're going to be transplanting our corn. It's a little bit more work up front, but I did a germ test on my seedling, on my seeds, and instead of wasting a whole tray of seeds, I'm deciding to just transplant my corn this year. We're gonna see how that works, and we'll talk about the benefits of that and stuff like that. It's the beginning of May. The first week of May is when we're gonna get these in the ground, and I did testing, and on that 30 degree night, I left my transplants outside. I left my transplants outside in the weather, in that 30 degree weather, and the corn transplants, they survived. The variety I have is better for germinating in cold soils. That's probably better for some people or not for some other people in different regions, but over here, I like to get it in the ground as early as possible. Now that just wasn't possible for me because I was gonna use my seeder to direct seed it in here and this was just gonna be for me to fill in skips, okay? It's just rained so much that I never got the chance to get it in here, and by the time I could get it in there, these transplants were looking good, and I decided that I was just gonna go for it and see how it goes. Now, why are we doing this? Now, the benefits of seed starting this corn is you can fill in skips a lot easier, because if you ever had a washout where it washes a row of seeds out and the rest of your corn's germinating and you got an empty patch, well, this can benefit you to not have such a headache to have to go out there and direct seed some more. You already got the transplants right here. You can pop them in the ground and they should take about a week to get back to fighting strength and get going. I have seen videos of people successfully transplanting corn, and I've heard from other YouTubers on their videos that they have done it as well. So we decided to give it a try. We didn't want to waste these corn transplants. Now, some of the benefits of these transplants is you can fill in the skips from like washout or if a plant gets eaten by animals, you know, you got that back up because it's already going to be hard to catch back up growth from direct seeding some seedlings, you know what I mean? And then if you have this tray filled, you can just pop them in the ground, no big deal. You can get a jump start on production. Like if you got a variety that doesn't do well in colder soils, you can transplant it by seed starting it. And then when it finally warms up, it's already ready to grow, ready to grow in the ground. Like it's ready to grow. It's a good way to avoid the cold soils, like I said, for germination. Or you can skip problems at the beginning of the growth, you know, like if you got some bad weather coming in and it washes them out, like I said. Now you can minimize some weeding problems by weeding before you put your transplants in. Like I tilled this and obviously you have weeds germinating. I've had a lot of weeds germinate already and I have cultivated this about five times and culled a lot of these weeds. Not saying it's gonna fix it, but that's a lot of weeding around corn plants I didn't have to do yet. So that's a big plus for me. Another thing is you can have that robust size transplant you can, that can be protected because you can take it in the greenhouse, because you can take it in the greenhouse at that young stage to protect it. Now corn, it can also be great as a rotational crop. Last year we did a lot of cucurbits here, this year we're doing corn. Because it hosts fewer insects and it hosts fewer diseases like other veggies that can get them, the corn doesn't have that kind of problems any. It doesn't have the problems as cucurbits has for disease or pests. So it's a good rotational crop because if they overwinter here or if they just come back every year, try rotating your crops, like put corn in there. Now you need to transplant them in a timely manner so seedling roots do not get too crowded. The corn grows fast. They've been in this tray for maybe two weeks and they are they're good enough for me to want to put them in the ground. I'll show you a transplant. See if I can get you in close here. It's kind of hard to hold it here, get it pick up for you. Hopefully you can see that, the root structure, a nice little size plug, nice transplant, corn transplant, beautiful. 
perfect for putting right in the ground. I wouldn't want them to get too much farther in their development like that, but you can, I'm sure you could probably get by with it. Smaller transplant, less transplant shock. Now, if you're wondering, how did you get here? Like this plot was covered the last time you guys probably seen this. Now there's some things that I can record and can't record, and I did record what this looks like after I uncovered it. I'll pop up a video of us uncovering that plot and you will see that and kind of see what we was dealing with some of them old tarps I got was still showing some light through, so some of the winter rye was making it, so I knew I had to till it and get it terminated, so I did it early. This is really hard clay soil, and I did not amend this with gypsum this year, and I can already tell that I have not amended it, because cultivating through it, it just breaks up in those big clumps, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't have that tilth of a good soil just yet. It's just really hard clay, and I have grown here Four times I've grown corn one year. Next year I grew cucurbits in here and pumpkins and watermelon in the next year, which will be this year. We're going to do corn and then maybe something in the fall. Maybe we'll do some more cold season stuff just to see if we can pull off something like that. So I'll pop up a video if I haven't already showing you what that looks like. <clears throat> so after that, we tilled it twice from both directions. That really helps level out your uh, garden bed and helps get a better till on it when you have a small rotary tiller like we have. Now we're going to be doing seven rows of this corn here. It's a 20 by 20 plot. So it's gonna be sort of a square, which is what you wanna trans, what you wanna, what you wanna, which is what you wanna plant it in, a square for good pollination. There's two rows on the end, saving those specifically for the giant butternut squash. The reason I'm doing that is because I've gardened here about four years now and always in this corner over here, that's a drainage ditch from the garage and about right here, which is the middle of those last two rows, it gets a lot, lot of water, okay? And at times I don't even have to run the drip lines on those two because that side just gets more water drain off, you know, and it just kind of sits in that one spot because it doesn't drain well. I won't have to run both drip lines all the time because that spot's gonna keep more moisture it has for every year since I've planted here. So I'm gonna use that to my advantage this year and put one of them down there on that end and one in the middle, depending on how many seeds germinate. We will see how well that works because that's gonna help me a lot. Now our row spacing is stepped off by my foot measure, three foot row spacing by the foot measure, my right foot measure to be precise. Now we're not gonna get too particular with it. That's close enough for me. Now the transplants are gonna be about six to eight inches apart. I'll pip up a video of me using the dibble wheel. I had to use the dibble wheel to get perfect spacing and it's probably tough for some people to be able to get this thing to work and I'll show you, or I'll tell you my trick here is I run these drip lines the day before for roughly an hour or two. You wanna just get enough moisture in that dirt around that drip line. And then if it gets too wet, you can use a hilling hoe and throw a little bit of dirt on top of that to keep it from sticking to your wheel. Then once you do that, you can kind of get about a halfway deep indention in this hard clay soil. And that's been the best way that I've been able to use it for me. It's not ideal, it's not perfect, but it gets my spacing and it gets me a little bit of a hole dug to where all I gotta do is just a quick dig and throw it right, throw a little dirt over it. Now we didn't do a pre-plant fertilizer because we're going to be doing that slurry method we do for everything else. And we're going to inject it this time. We probably won't include that into this video. We'll do that another time that's not such a huge deal. The main thing is, is getting the transplants in the ground because it is perfect time to get them in the ground. Cause we got some rain coming up here in the next four days and it's gonna rain for like three or four days, which is perfect for corn because if I can get them to get out of that transplant shock before that rain hits, they're gonna soak it up and they're gonna start growing. It's gonna be quick. The Honey Select Sweet Corn. This is what the seed we have. We've had this for over three years, I think now. And it's held up pretty good. I'll show you the seed tray here in a minute and you'll see the 338 seed cell tray. We seeded these guys in and they are doing great. 75 day to maturity. It's a triple sweet sugary enhanced hybrid with tender flavorful sweet kernels. Has a 75% sugary enhanced kernels and 25% super sweet kernels, making it a perfect combination for flavor and sweetness. There are large eight inch ears that are filled to the tip germinates and emerges well in cooler soils, has a great storage field holding ability for longer processing window. That right there is why we chose this variety. 
sometimes you can't get to something like this to harvest and it, you, some some corns, if you don't get out there and harvest, it's gonna turn starchy on you and you don't want that. We've done this corn before and I gotta say, Honey Select does the name justice. If you haven't grown it yet, it is delicious. I'm sure there's a lot of people that have a lot more varieties that they enjoy over this one, but I've done peaches and cream and I've done this one now. And I gotta say, since I still had the seed, I stayed with it. But if I didn't have seed, I probably would've went with a new variety. But this is really good. It's almost like candy, and I can attest to that. It's delicious. So let's go ahead and show you the seed tray, and then we'll show you how we transplant a couple of these, and then we'll go ahead and transplant them, and that, that should be a wrap. So let's go ahead and show you this tray, see what they look like. All right. Let me see if I can get this in picture for you. Look at these guys. Beautiful, ain't it? Beautiful, beautiful. As you can see, this little forest of corn, if I don't drop them, they are going to be put in the ground. So, now I fertilize these with the brass siphon mixture. And for any of my past videos, I have noticed that my brass siphon mixer was broke. And it quit working there for a while, but I unplugged it, cleaned it out. And it started working again. <clears throat> and I noticed that because most of my plants were having deficiency issues. And I did not know that that thing, it just kept leaking water out of it into the bucket where I had the fertilizer. And eventually diluted that fertilizer to practically nothing but water. Learned my lesson there. So if any of you do not know that's possible, it can happen. But I got it fixed and everything's working great now. Now, another thing is... I got a plan for this corn, okay? So the kids want watermelons and I got and I want the corn. So what I'm thinking is is my watermelon transplants are about 4 weeks behind. So I'm going to get this corn transplanted and 4 weeks later this corn it's going to be far enough along that I think I can transplant watermelons in between them for a ground cover. And by the time them watermelon transplants get big enough to start putting on fruit, the corn should be close to being harvested. I'm pretty sure that's going to work. The days to maturity on both of these, that should work out. And I think it's going to work great. Because whenever I cultivate these in the row to get these weeds out, by the time I get these watermelons transplanted, they're going to be able to vine around, cover the ground, and give me some ground cover. And by the time that corn's done... I should be able to start putting it to those watermelons and start getting some fruit. So, corn first, like four weeks from now, then watermelon transplants should be popping. Then, those guys are gonna go in, I'm gonna skip every other row and put them in. And in some of them, it should be perfect timing before they finally start putting on fruit. So, stay tuned and hopefully we can get that going for you guys so you to see if it actually works. I hope it works. So let's go ahead and get out here and show you how we transplant these. All right, so pretty much what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull one of these transplants out of this plug. Nice little transplant. If they got any doubles you transplanted in there, you wanna pinch them off, they're probably gonna grow back anyway. So then I'm just gonna take my hand, make this hole a little bit bigger. And I'm just gonna cover this little guy up. He'll straighten himself out eventually. And that's pretty much it. As you can see, this transplant's a little smaller. Not a big deal. Pluck that other little guy out of there just in case. I'm just gonna make this hole just a little bit deeper and then throw a little dirt up to it. Now the drip line's about three inches away from these guys. And with the dibble wheel, I have had best experience not using that when the drip lines are on, obviously, because you could puncture it. When I first got it, I did do that, so fair warning. But you leave it off and you plant off to the side of this about maybe two inches or so, and then you won't have as many problems. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get the rest of these guys transplanted, and then we're gonna go ahead and, and then we're gonna show see how many we got left. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, so we got all that done. I do not recommend, if you got bigger than a 20, 20 by 20 square plot, transplanting might not be for you, but it's very cost effective if you're gonna do a lot of work yourself and you don't have the money for a cedar. If you have trays already, works pretty good. That's all I got left. If you was wondering, these are the rough end looking side that had a bunch of a uh, bunch of dried up ones on the edge there because water in these trays you really got to watch around the edges now that we got all that done these guys are ready to be fertilized in so i'm going to do that through my drip system another time now that i got this done like this the only things that i have left to plant are my giant butternut squash and my honey nut squash those are still in the greenhouse and in the next video we will do a garden update video and show you how everything is doing to keep you up to date on everything that we've been doing this is not a pro gardener here like the video if you liked the video don't forget to share and show your friends that you can transplant sweet corn we're going to pretty much spray these guys with some animal repellent and you can make that yourself it's not a pro gardener here don't forget to share and show your friends don't forget to like and uh, we'll see you next time out here in the garden. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.